Okay, thank you. Hi. Thank you for attending. Um, yeah, it's late. So, the name of the talk is From Hand to Mouth, and it's about how we eat. It's about the eating culture, food culture. And, well, it's kind of related to React. So, hope you will have some fun here. Um, briefly about my person, I'm uh, working for Codecentric, German consulting company, and I'm working on some bleeding edge technologies, at least something that uh, the IT industry in Germany would call bleeding edge technology. Um, I'm also writing books, and, and you're very welcome to buy them, <laughs> of course. So the most recent one is Erling OTP. It's also kind of, kind of related to bleeding edge technologies. And the next one, which I'm writing right now, it's big data for IT decision makers. And it's about, well, IT decision making in technology and big data stuff and all that. So it's, uh, well, it has to be done soon. So let's keep it. OK. Um, oh yeah, by the way, not to forget it, uh, I have a copy of one of my books, so if you're a German speaker, I will ask a pretty deep going question, technical question, by the end of the talk, and I, feel, I will just raffle it. So feel free to answer the question and get this uh, masterpiece. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, I should be done by this slide, it's like, forget backend, that's the main message of what I'm talking about here, but I need to fill those 20 minutes, so um, I need to go on. And just, I would just suggest, forget the backend as you know it. What you call a backend. Because your application server will typically slow down your machines in order to keep step with them. And on the other side, you will have, maybe if you have many millions of connections, gazillions of connections, whatever, you will have to slow down your network traffic to keep step with all that. So it works. So the user experience will be like, you order food at McDonald's, then you get queued and receive the ordered food through mail three days later. That's actually the user experience. If you try to do some progress bars and, you know, those psychological stuff that you do on the web pages, or on, in your applications, your user experience will be something like order food at McDonald's, get queued, leave the restaurant with colored pictures of your food, and wait three days for its delivery. So, every single abstraction layer around your data, like, you know, ORM and stuff, it will just help to kill Brazilian rainforest. So, actually, it's a, this one is like USS Enterprise in your pocket, you know? And what you can have in your cluster is like Babylon 5. So that's actually the interesting part of the message. So at the end of the day, it's always storing data, updating, deleting, reading, searching, processing data, and whatnot. It's not only CRUD, but it's maybe much more. So the question is, why would you want to, you know, a clown, to have a clown car full of... No. Stupid. So you, you should have a Ferrari instead of a cloud car. A Ferrari full of these. That's the message. So actually, what I suggest for some special use cases that I will describe, you can, you can just, you know, you can live from hand to mouth. And... When you have something like this, your user, and it's actually something I'm working on, your user is totally drunk in a football stadium, and he's trying to, you know, with one finger and, and with, a, with a shaking hand, trying to type in, Ronaldo just should go, you know? And it's a lot of typos and a lot of, a lot of confusion there. So what you actually want to have is, you want to protocol this fact immediately, you want to have it somewhere in your data store, and you want to look at it later in combination with some different 
with some further facts that somebody who's also drunk has provided. So you get a picture of this fact. So what you would do is just, you know, um, you realize Ronaldo has made this goal and you will use it for statistics and whatnot. So more concrete, it's mobile clients would write everywhere. They will buffer in case that they have no connection, what can happen. They will read occasionally if it must be. They will you will post-process the data later, behind the scenes, doing statistics and stuff. So more concrete, you can say, it's immediate, reliable, massive writes that you have, because data comes from everywhere. You want to store every single, well, fact or pre-fact, and you will do some analytics afterwards. And there is no need to be exact to the second with your data and to be 100% complete in what you have there. Because, well, actually, if you lose something, it's not that good, but it's the combination of the facts which counts. So how I'm doing this is the mobile client just drops the data to Reactor, and analytics is, do, is being done afterwards. So much more concrete, it, it works like this. You have a client application here. I'm using protobufs or RESTful, whatever, so it's like, you know, fallback. Round robbing to different React uh, entry points, to different uh, machines there, different nodes. I have this ring there, I will go through it right now. So I can buffer some data if I have no connection on my mobile device, and I will batch it off later to a React store. And this analytics is done using R and whatnot, using same mechanisms or even speaking natively Erlang with the React store. So the infrastructure can be done, of course. The most challenging thing is, for sure, to understand the incoming facts and to make a standardized form of this. But it's not the point of this talk. <laughs> um, it's a different story. It's uh, not very simple. So just read after me, how the heck does it work? Um, if you have had a look at React, React is a uh, component-based system. So the most important thing there is this React core. You can build different things around this. You can even have own commit hooks. You can create own backends and whatnot. You can use custom hash functions. So what I'm into with this solution is, you know, reliability. I want in any coast that the facts will be stored, either on the local client and batch later, or directly to the React store. I just wa don't want to lose any data there. It's not critical, but still. So what I have is a ring where I have several entry points and it's consistent caching. So React uh, provides much more reliability, not, not only using the physical nodes, but also virtual nodes. So you have a, a much, uh, more, um, much finer separation and, and you know, split in, in, into uh, chunks and, and where chunks go to actually physically. And I can have a quorum, of course, Everybody knows this. I suppose that you know about Amazon Dynamo paper and, and whatnot. So I'm using the Quorum um, for, you know, I just would have maybe three nodes in the first step and I will decide that I want to go to two of them. And it's sufficient for me to, to have a simple write confirmation. Um, so what is also interesting is uh, this infrastructural um, transparency, that I can add nodes to the ring and, you know, some magic will happen behind the scenes. It's like copying data around. It's not the full rehashing because it's a self-healing thing and it will just copy some segments of the ring to a new machine and it will do the same stuff with even when I remove something. And the sloppy quorum works for writes and for reads. So I can, well, also decide that when, when I read, whenever I read, I, it's sufficient to have uh, two nodes giving me the same data 
instead of three nodes, for example. So the gossip protocol, uh, it's not the full gossip architecture that is implemented in uh, React, which is also pretty academic. But uh, what counts is the gossip protocol. It, it's again the infrastructural flexibility that nodes use, say, use data communication to tell other nodes that new nodes are in the system or even have disappeared or whatever. The vector clocks is the very cool things we have heard about problem of, of clocks, of global clocks, and the Google guy has uh, provided some very interesting information I need to look at. But well, vector clocks are a very good feature, but uh, well, actually I don't need them because I don't have concurrent rights. But it has to be on the slide because if it's an overview, so it has to be there. <laughs> okay, the map reduce is something that I really use. I absolutely need it for statistics, for analytics, and whatever I will uh, implement on top of that, because it just can, can distribute work to separate nodes in the cluster, search for data, aggregate data, and get it back to the coordinator node, and do the, re uh, the reduce phase, phase there. I can even pipeline this stuff. Um, the hinted handoff is something that makes the system even more reliable. Because what, what I'm doing is I have on the client, I have a couple of entry points, so I can round robin through them and I can drop the data to the React store at whatever place and it, it ensures that if the actual target node is not available, it will just you know keep the data and will hand it over later. That's a pretty cool feature here. So when replica fail, it will be done like that, you know, I can move it to this node and it will keep the copy of this data until it come back, comes back and it will be handed over. So, but the whole system can do even much more. Of course, you can, you can use the index for, you know, to search with data locality, of course, on the node where the data actually is. You can use, you can tag your data and you, you can use the secondary index feature provided with React um, with a special backend where you can just search for tag data. And you can implement hooks. So just imagine when data comes in into my store, I need to do something with it. I need to normalize it. I need to check out if I would do it immediately or will do it later because it's too complex, for example, to analyze. So it, it will be done, or at least it, it is done with, um, with hooks, with a commit hook. Um, if you open your mind with the real core and the system around it, the foundation for distributed system, you can build even much more. Just think about the possibility that you don't even need to store anything. If you have a calculation that you need to distribute, and it's a pretty interesting use case for, not only for, you know, for startups, but also for banks and stuff. So if you are able to distribute calculation, you can, and you can design it, uh, decide using a, a criteria where to go to so you would implement a known hash function which will send this calculation request to a target node and it will provide the result later. So you can aggregate it then. You can do the same with search. You can even replace old cobble based batch systems with something like that. It's pretty cool. So what I would suggest to look at is tendita.com and that's uh, good friend of mine implementing this. Um, they're working, well, what they do is actually they use zero and Q to wire React to whatever technology behind the scenes, whatever adapter exists for zero and Q. And they can just call, you know, calculation, data storage, whatnot, behind the scenes, written in Java, Ruby, and so on and so forth. So they are based on the React core. So for my special case, even having a clown car, a small application, which will grow with the time, it's even also possible to have those ladies with React Core in this machine. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much. So I need to get rid of this book before the question comes. That's my question. So, um, 
Is any German speaker around? Okay, the question is, what was on the first slide? What picture? Burger eating girl. Okay, so we have a winner, whoever you are. I don't see it well. Okay, you'll get the book. <laughs> All right, are there questions? It's of course, it's not possible to do this, this talk with all technical details in 20 minutes because originally it was planned as a 40 minutes talk. So if you have any questions about how a React system works and how React Core can speak with, uh, communicate with the com components around, we can do it after the talk. Basho guys are around who can provide even much more insight into it. And I would just suggest that you check it out. It's not only a data store, it's a real foundation for working distributed systems. It's a real, it's implementation of Amazon Dynamo paper. And well, it's pretty cool. I'm not working for Basher, so I don't advertise it. Thank you again. <laughs>